After a long hiatus, I've come back to the 3.22 Path of Exile and Sister League, and I'm here to give a quick rundown on what I'm doing in the league currently, some of my future plans, and some spiel on my thoughts on the Ancestor Trials League mechanic itself. So, without a further ado, let's get straight on into it. In short, I started 3.22 as a Bone Shattered Jug, and will probably make a guide for this as one of the next league starters. As far as melee goes, Bone Shatter is pretty much your best option for league starting as it scales off itself really well and Juggernaut makes it tanky enough for early maps with its major weakness being poor single target that becomes increasingly noticeable as you progress into red tier. Personally, whilst I tried out Bone Shatter just to give it a go because I never had before, it's not my cup of tea as Melee and Path of Exile is just too much of a pain in the ass on the best of days and Bone Shatter, despite being one of the best melee, is still melee. I got like two watchstones and have instead decided to move on to lightning arrow which while absolutely squishier feels surprisingly smoother for general map farming. As always you can check out my progress live on Twitch. I try to stream around 5 p.m PST or a little earlier for a few hours every day and I'm free to new players looking for help or just you know if you want to shoot the shit ask me some silly questions. It's whatever really. This league has been particularly rough, however, owing to some nasty performance issues that GGG is aware of, but still working on fixing. Just recording gameplay for this video has been pretty rough, so I hope they get that sorted soon. So, you know, if I'm streaming, I'm streaming, and if I'm not, it's because the techno demons found out where I live again, and I have to fumigate my walls with fire! Lightning Arrow is my current working build, it is going pretty good. It has significantly better clear than Bone Shatter, and noticeably more single target, at least for my setup. It is, however, squishy as all fuck. You're pretty much gonna get one shot at some point, often from shit you can't see because your own arrows make for a colourful array of blue vomit. Your best defence is simply murderising the enemy before you ever see them. Have fun! In the next few weeks I'll start working on an Impending Doom Pathfinder. Impending Doom is a skill I tried last league and found very enjoyable and am now after a few hot fix notes by Chi 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 am even more dead set on giving it another go. In short, early this league there was a bug with the way Spell Cascade worked. GGG claims that this is intended and whilst they've fixed it for now, come next league it'll be gone and the interaction will be broken. The too long didn't read being that Spell Cascade allows Impending Doom to overlap, dealing more damage than it otherwise would. Without this interaction, it's pretty weak, so unless it gets compensated, it's not looking good for the great old school, which is it's kind of a shame. So I'll be making an abridged build for this at some point during this league, and I highly recommend you give it a go while you can. Alrighty then, so let's move on to Trial of the Ancestor, this league's unique mechanic. For those who have yet to start the league, Trial is effectively an auto-battler light, similar to teamfight tactics and such, except that you also fight alongside your teammates. You fight in tournaments that consist of several rounds and get harder, but also more rewarding as you progress. The area is held within its own map where you can find various infamous Karui leaders within Path of Exile's lore that allow you to buy and sell fighters and various equipment for them to use during the trial itself. As is the case with most things in Path of Exile, it's not all that well explained, but it is relatively easy to fuck around and experiment. Unlike regular gameplay, losing a tournament or dying within it causes no XP loss, so it only really costs you your time. Now, as usual, since I am prone to ranting and rambling on, which I don't really want to do with this video, I'm going to go through the positives before moving on to the more egregious problems I have. One of the coolest things about this league is how much lore it drops on us. If you are a fan at all of Path of Exile's narrative and backstory, then Ancestor is fantastic, as it concerns all things Karui, with all of the NPCs having a slew of irrelevant dialogue pertaining their tribe, the god they worship, or even their opinions on the other leaders. You also get some one-on-one -on -one time with Hinakora, the Karui god of death, after you've won a tournament who largely talks in riddles. I will say, this league actually somehow made me to sympathize with Udala, the genocidal psychopathic fuckass who helps free Katava. Yeah. That, that's how good the lore is. Seriously, it's pretty sweet. Visual-wise, it also seems that some of the graphics have been taken from Path of Exile 2 as they're notably higher quality. It's kind of hard to notice too well during the tournaments given Path of Exile's propensity to bombarding your eyes with colourful confetti everywhere, but there's definitely some higher fidelity models going on. Finally, the mechanic itself is 
actually pretty rewarding for how little risk it has. After the first week, uh, GGG buffed the rewards significantly and I think they're in a pretty good spot overall. The fact that you can't really die means all you're really losing is your time. Realistically, some people may find maps and other extra content to be more consistent overall, but if you're a new player, I think Trial of the Ancestor really isn't that terrible an option if you enjoy it. From the negative perspective, I mainly just find the entire experience draining and bland. Its core problem is that it is too repetitive, without much variance each match to break it up like you might see in a real auto battler. Once you've discovered a strategy that consistently works, you can pretty much just go on and do that strategy over and over. In particular, the most effective strategies are ones where you can continue to deal damage at extreme ranges using totems or bow skills, which is what I effectively do with Lightning Arrow. With this being effective, at least until you've ranked up enough to start being one shot instead, which is my other main issue. A lot of enemies are just not tuned very well, and dying off screen to some rogue arrow is quite common. The damage and health scaling of the enemies is such that your own teammates hit like a wet noodle slapping an enraged bear. But, unlike Baldur's Gate 3, another game I've been spending way too much time on recently, the bears don't even have the courtesy to give me some fucking foreplay first. The third and final issue I have is that it uses an ELO style ranking system like a typical auto battler would. As you progress through tournaments you get ranked up. The higher your rank the better your rewards but the harder the enemies scale. This is honestly this is totally fine generally. The premise is acceptable except that you have no control over this rank and you can't downgrade very easily. Unlike say Delve where you can start making sideways progression when you've hit the peak difficulty your build can comfortably do, there's no way to just pause the rank up in trials. You have to deliberately lose a shitload of rounds to lower your rank by an appreciable amount which takes forever. If they just had a slider so us more casual players could accept a lesser reward for a smoother battle, the entire thing would honestly end up being so much more enjoyable. To put it simply, so I can wrap this up already, it's an auto battler without the essence of an auto battler. In a way, it's very much like how Sanctum was to roguelikes, in that it tries to sell itself off as one without any of the same depth. Which makes sense, given the incredibly small time schedule GGG have to work on these, but that's all the more reason why I wish they'd just be a little more realistic with their ambitions. In general, there is a lot I could ramble on about, but most of my issues are with the general balance. If they fix this, I'd still find it boring, but that's a personal preference rather than a particularly critical one. Uh, in any case, I hope you guys are doing great with your own League starters and whatnot. I am doing great with Lightning Arrow, other than occasionally having my corpse splattered across the pave walk, but hey, that's, that's what happens when you play Deadites. Pretty normal. Feel free to share your own builds and such in the comments as I'd love to hear what you guys are up to. As usual, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash artastics where I may be streaming if the game's performance gets any better in the next few days. Or I may not. Who knows? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.